Now let us spare a thought for those living in Toronto, Canada, Ontario, to be exact. And what's been happening? Well, something we've been covering on the channel now for the last six years is finally coming to light. What are we talking about? Money laundering. How bad? It's actually a lot bad. And that's why Canadian housing is headed to disaster. Not the brink of disaster, disaster. Well, property prices are still going up. Well, that's a sign of a major melt-up, a major melt-up. This housing correction in Canada will affect every Canadian citizen or every Canadian uh, living in Canada, and that may trigger Australia, New Zealand, and the UK to follow in suit. Well, what is Canada talking about? Let's go over to our friends here on City News and see what they have to say, and it's kind of important because they're talking about what we've been talking about for many years. But I was dismissed as having a IQ of a jar of toenails when I brought it up. So let's see what they're saying now. You may not realize is that anonymous investors are using real estate in Canada to launder money to the tune of billions of dollars being dumped in. Billions. To what is known as snow washing. When people think about money laundering, they typically don't think about Canada. They think of places like the Swiss Alps or Cayman Islands or whatnot. Private numbered companies with no information on those who own or control them, called beneficial owners, buying and selling property without issue. It's a big enough problem that a joint study released a couple of years ago found that more than $28 billion in GTA housing alone was bought by corporate entities. That now... This is basically what uh, Blackstone or BlackRock is doing in the States, where entities would be buying up properties, leaving them empty. Now, let's go to here. Now, let's go to something a little bit more recent here from Better Dwelling, and this is very important. Money laundering through commodities is old news. It is. It's old news. The velocity is new, and this is what we need to be looking at. Laundering money through real estate is far from new, but the velocity and volume is tra uh, traditionally launderers would buy, hold, and sometimes even rent out pl uh, places out. The lack of scrutiny in real estate transactions has always made it prime landing spots. Every city has a, a few well-known families connected to local mobs that just happen to be in real estate. Uh, the impact to home prices are minimal when the volume is low and slow. Treating real estate like global commodity uh, market makes it fast and high volume. The real estate industry in Canada encourages foreign capital. So Canada was like basically we're open for business. Now Australia was competing with Canada for foreign investing to bring in more Chinese money, and so has um, New Zealand, and New Zealand is, is out of control. We just had a friend on the streets there in Auckland yesterday that was roaming around looking at some construction sites. He says nobody there working on the construction site is from New Zealand, like nobody. It's Yeah, so it's a lot of foreign entities and companies that are coming in and taking over. This has been an issue, uh, an issue stock markets had to deal with, equity, is issued artificial volume inflates prices and launderers liquidate to unsuspecting victims local people local canadian proper equity markets have increased ownership transparency on larger exchanges making it more difficult however it's still common especially european asian stock exchanges treating uh, real estate like stock market encourages the same type of laundering without transparency so here it is uh, fun fact, the defunct Vancouver Stock Exchange was popular with money launderers. It was so popular, Forbes called it the Vancouver scam capital of the world in 1989. Now, you know what they're calling Vancouver? The model, the model of money laundering for real estate. So let's go into this. And how, how is this money being made? Well, a lot of it is being made through fentanyl sales. And lots of fentanyl sales uh, that are uh, fentanyl and opioids that are being created and fabricated in factories in China have been bringing over the fentanyl and have been uh, reinvesting the profits into Canadian real estate. So the middle class dies of overdoses or the, the, you know, the working poor or the Canadian proper gets hooked on drugs, dies, and then the money gets reinvested into properties. And this is something we've been talking about for years. This is a an older article right so this is like let's go back to the top 
really well. Fentanyl making a killing. Secret police study finds crime networks could have laundered over $1 billion through Vancouver homes just in 2016. And this is something I've been uh, carrying or talking about on my channel through fentanyl importers. So China's been actually sending the chemicals to Mexico now that make the fentanyl. So China would be off the hook for creating and making the fentanyl and opioids in their country. Mexico is making it now and they're trafficking it north uh, into into um, America and Canada. So here it is, guys. So we've been talking about this on this channel. My channel's been shut down, striked down, kicked off YouTube many times. And here it is right now. Canada's GDP needs money laundering. Look at this. Two years ago, Australian housing money laundering problems. Sydney housing four years ago. Cocaine sales down, dark web money laundering. Uh, colleges connected to money laundering two years ago. Toronto needs more money laundering. Toronto housing crisis four years ago. Australia money laundering fiasco two years ago. Housing crisis, no investigation in money laundering. So we had an investigation into money laundering. And when they realized how many hundreds of thousands of people were going to get arrested, uh, foreigners from China, they basically had to shut that right down. World needs more money laundering. Money laundering, uh, uh, money laundering by foreigners destroying housing affordability two years ago. Money. So I was told that money laundering is non-existing, and I'm nuts. And say hello to Amerifornia. Money laundering. Uh, BC, listen to this. Two years ago, Toronto needs more money laundering. Vancouver is a money laundering hotspot. Three years ago, Westpac. This is in Australia. Faces fines for over more money laundering breaches. How many? Twenty six million money laundering breaches in one year. Billions laundered in Toronto two years ago. Housing supply on demand or vacant home issue four years ago. Foreclosures and evictions won't correct the housing market three months ago. Canada needs more money, more laundered money a year ago. 63 billion laundered in Australia. That's my opinion. Actually, it's more. I think it's close to 200 billion laundered through Australia's real estate market. Uh, casinos are mad over simple regulation because people were laundering. Foreigners were laundering money through there. Vancouver housing update. The bubble gets bigger five years ago. Chinese banks account frozen overseas. Kick the can down the road. Housing will never go down four years ago. People more confident in real estate than gold four years ago. Toronto needs more Chinese investors four years ago. FOMO, the fear of missing out four years ago. Um, our Canadian dream is destroyed. BC to ban practice of hiding homeownership. So they were hiding homeownership. So if you, if you connect the dots on my channel, this is searching across my channel and what I've been discussing here. Now, you look, Seattle, so it's not just Toronto. Toronto isn't the only city that's dealing with this. When Vancouver put the foreign buyer's tax on, Seattle started drying up with foreign investing. Seattle needs more Chinese. Why? Because Trump was in power back then, and a lot of Chinese weren't investing in America. So America was kind of free for a while from foreign dominance. And then you know what happened after with the new president select. Let's move on. Vancouver housing, illusion or fact? Watch what I wrote here. When was this? September 10th, 2016. Watch this on the channel here. I think this is a major issue. And if locals can't afford or won't attempt to get in, won't get into, into this FOMO housing market, it's major. It's major. Canada will lose its major talent stateside. Doctors, nurses, heck, even electricians and carpenters will flee. It's happening in Sydney, London, England, English speaking countries, open markets. So that's from, again, 2016. Now, here it is. We've been warning about this. We read this article from Better Dwelling. Canada would be in a recession without money laundering. Instead of 20 or 30, hundreds of billions of dollars laundered through different provinces here. The most interesting report in money laundering is growing faster, th faster than the GDP. The papers estimate $46.7 billion laundered, uh, laundered cash for 2018, which represents around 2.1% of the GDP. And the GDP only grew 1.57%. Money laundering in Alberta... Money laundering all over Canada, stealing middle class Canadians positions in life. Canadian, uh, European Canadians that came over to build Canada back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. My dad was one of them. And basically the infrastructure doesn't exist for his kids and grandkids. Move over locals because it's for the infrastructure's built. They don't need us anymore, right? A record flight of capital, 43.6 billion from Hong Kong to Canada. This was... A survival mechanism. Canada was hoping for something like this to happen. And $43.6 billion from Hong Kong when there were the Hong Kong riots. Canada was standing with Hong Kong because mainland Chinese money wasn't leaving China anymore. 
So they needed Hong Kong. So $43.6 billion, that's what they've only caught. That's all what they only know from, from Hong Kong to Canada. And these are only the Canada's anti money laundering agency, which received reports and transfers above ten thousand dollars. So that's all. That's all. They they've only caught bits of it. They don't even have it all. So that's what kept Canada's Canada was in hope that this would happen in China. So Canada, Australia, New Zealand were competing for Hong Kong residents. Forget the locals that live here that can't even afford to rub two nickels together, right? Let's keep moving on here. So world economy would collapse if the city of London stopped laundering money, says HSBC whistleblower. This was in 2020. So this is kind of important because this is in January 2020, and we had to lock things down before things got out of control and a mysterious virus came out of nowhere and locked down the world. Remember on this channel, we've been saying 2017 was the year of the repo markets. 2018 was the year of the balance. 2019 was the year of the protest. 2020 was the year of the, uh, of the, of the lockdown. And 2021 is the year of the blood clot. So, and 2022 might be the year of the uh, protest again when things start spinning around. All right. So how do we fix this problem? Well, here it is. Vacant homes are a global epidemic and Paris is fighting it with the 60% tax. Again, from Better Dwelling here. And basically, runaway real estate speculation has been filing global capitals with vacant homes, creating artificial shortages in the world's most sought after cities. The short shortage has made local homeowners wealthy overnight, but it comes at a cost turning lively cities into empty shells. Sydney, Auckland, uh, Melbourne, uh, uh, London, uh, Liverpool, uh, all kinds, uh, Glasgow, Dublin, Vancouver, Toronto, Los Angeles, S S Seattle, uh, um, Oregon, Portland. All these cities have turned, and New York have turned into empty shells because they are bringing, they're bringing in and competing for money laundering, right? So runaway real estate speculation has, uh, has been filing global capitals with vacant homes, uh, creating artificial shortages in the world's most sought-after cities. The shortage has made local homeowners wealthy overnight, but it comes at a cost of turning lively cities into empty shells. The city of Paris has decided it's had enough and implementing a tax in 2015. They did not quite get the results, so now they're tripling the tax to 60%. Paris home empty problems. So this is an older article. Take, take a gander at this. So there's Toronto there with 99,000 empty homes. This is like very old, so this is not even near or near. So if you look at all of these, they're either blue cities uh, blue, blue states or they are um, English speaking countries. So Los Angeles, blue state, uh, right? And then San Francisco is in, in the blue state. Vancouver, liberal. Toronto, liberal. Sydney, liberal. Singapore, I'm not sure. Paris, not too sure. Uh, Hong Kong, liberal. Well, before, democratic liberal. And then New York City, very liberal state. And London, very liberal. So there you go right there. The, the people are competing to move and reestablish into these cities. So now they've added the foreign buyers tax in to help stop this problem in France. But this is before the Gilles de Jean, is it? The, the, the yellow vest? Yeah, this is way before the yellow vest movement. This is 2017. So I've been covering for many years. So now Amerifornia is coming. What is Amerifornia? Where Amerifornia was launched, I made a video the day this is Amerifornia meaning or welcome to Amerifornia is basically when Joe Biden was selected as president of the United States and Amerifornia started to take off. So you could find a lot of my uh, a Biden win. Say hello to Amerifornia. That means bye bye Taiwan. I say it all here on what's happening and ele election rigging all over the world in favor of liberal parties so there it is and if you're still if you're living in canada and watching this i actually i actually believe it or not uh predicted the last election a year ago let's go to my channel here let's YouTubers. go mike to Martin's videos with the mike martin's channel thanks for joining me welcome to the ch let's see if i could find it it's way back here there's a video where i where i called the the liberal election and I went ahead and, this, oh, this is still four weeks ago. I called the liberal election. If you guys want to catch episodes of Mike of the Night, um, please go ahead and uh, follow us on Odyssey because we don't have, we, we're not allowed to be here on uh, YouTube. Let's see if liberal election, let's see if I could find it. Canada wants more Chinese immigration. That's four years ago. I'm just trying to see if we could get... Um, that prediction I made where I predicted that the Liberal Party will win this next, they will call a snap election and win back a year ago. And um, let me see if I could do uh, Liberal, Liberal win. See if that comes up here. 
It's here somewhere, guys. It's here on the channel. I did I did make the video of it uh, about a year ago, and it is here, people. There it is. Snap election. Liberal government will call a snap election and win. Uh, nine months ago, this is my opinion. No one panic. Just connecting the dots. So basically, I connected the dots through this video, and Some I... Some fairly strict public health measures due to COVID. So you're going to want to watch this Here's, video um, and how I predicted that the liberals will call a snap election first and win it on top. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you live in Toronto or you're planning on moving to Toronto or you left Toronto, please share this video. Get this out there. Let's get this information out there. My channel, you know, I should, you know, it, but unfortunately, it is, it is, it is shadow banned. So it, I've been shadow banned and struck down three times already. So if you want to come and follow us, come on Odyssey where you could find uh, um, episodes of Mike in the Night. I really appreciate that, guys. Uh, Mike in the Nights. Let me go to my channel again. This is what my channel looks like YouTubers. on Odyssey. Mike Martin's here with. And this is what it looks like here. Oops, that's Instagram. Man, I'm slow today. There's my uh, Odyssey channel there. If you guys don't mind getting over to Odyssey where we have uh, episodes of Mike in the Night. We had an episode of Mike in the Night last night where Ralphie's getting kicked out of his house because he's not taking the second vaccine and all kinds of other stuff happening here on Mike in the Night. The Lots of call-ins. Uh, not too and um, lots of things happening. So if you guys don't mind uh, joining me here on Odyssey, a link on top of the channel to the Odyssey channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you live in Toronto, I'll be praying for you guys. Thanks so much, and God bless.